Hi, I'm Fred from Homoly Dance, the channel on history and board games. Dan invited me to make a small segment on No Enemies Here called Hidden Gems. This is a series of mini reviews on lesser known games with small print runs that I think should deserve more love because they are so interesting and so different from other mass produced war games that we have in the hobby. If you want to see all the episodes in that series, you can find them on my channel. This week we'll talk about The Siege of Organ, released by Revolution Game in 2015 and designed by French designer designer Patrick Reichmann. This design is a card-assisted uh, area impulse game that covers the military engagement in Orgun from August 83 to January 84. This battle opposed the Taliban's to the soldiers of the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan. But first, as we usually do, let's start with a bit of historical context. The Soviet-Afghan war was a conflict that opposed Mujahideen groups to the Soviet-backed Afghan communist government. It lasted for almost a decade, from 79 to 89, and was a direct consequence of the Sour Revolution, a coup by the Afghan Communist Party that took place in 78. In December 79, as internal tension within the newly formed Democratic Republic and opposition in the population grew, the USSR decided to intervene in an attempt to save the revolution. This will trigger a decade of counterinsurgency warfare directly involving the Red Army. An insurgency that was notably supported by the US. And if this topic is of any interest to you, I would strongly recommend the movie released in 2007, Charlie Wilson's War, starring Tom Hanks as Congressman Charlie Wilson, the man behind the US bear trap strategy in Afghanistan. But what about the Battle of Orgun in all that? Well, in 1983, the Mujahideen had their eyes on this town close to the frontier with Pakistan, as they considered it as a potential provisional capital to their government in exile. Three different Islamist groups supported by Pashtun freelancers uh, joined their forces to attack the small DRA presence. The fight lasted for around six months and in January 84 the battle was a defeat for the Mujahideen after a successful attack by the Afghan army column to lift the siege. This battle showed the organizational limit uh, of uh, the Mujahideen groups, some of their problems relating to warfare. One of them being lack of coordination, no strategic vision and uh, a strong focus on looting rather than tactical objectives. So how does this game represent all of that? If you look at the map, the growth the one you will recognize all the attributes of an area impulse game. The map represents Orgun and its surrounding with all the key attributes of that battle. The main road to Kabul, the airfield serving as a supply source, the octagon fort that was a strong defensive position for the DRA, the overall layout of the city and its surrounding with the desert on one side and the mountain on the other. The setup is pretty straightforward, the DRA holds the city and the Mujahideen are spreading out in three groups. Players alternate activating areas and units within those areas to do multiple kind of actions. They can attack, they can move, and they can harass if they are the Mujahideens. The two sides feel very asymmetric, thanks to their units and different limitations. One of them for the Mujahideen being the tribal coordination. But also, each faction has a support deck. Because it's not just an area impulse game, players can use cards from their respective decks to support their actions. Overall, it looks and feels like a very compact Storm over Stalingrad. Before giving my opinion on the game, I'll start with a warning. Uh, this is a Ziploc game, but don't get fooled by the Ziploc. Revolution Games uh, released some very high quality games, well designed and especially well developed. And to make it even more confusing for such a small print run, the components are actually quite good. In my opinion, the Siege of Orgon is a perfect example of Revolution game releases, because it's excellent. And what sets this game apart for me are two specific things. First of all, a very well and interesting implemented theme, and those two support decks for each factions. There are not a lot of cards, but they definitely add to the narrative by casting light on important elements of the battle. The DRA can be impacted by troop defection and night attacks, while they can also use Soviet support and play with the tribal tensions. The area impulse system was a perfect choice to represent that event. It feels very thematic and made me want to learn more about this specific battle. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of resources online about this battle, but uh, I will add some information in the description. Overall, I think this is a great game, and if you have any interest in modern counterinsurgency or in the Soviet-Afghan war, this is a must-buy for you. Copies are still findable online, I think some of them new, you just have to look for them on BoardGameGeek. I hope that you enjoyed this very short review of Hidden Gems number 2, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.